Boy, look at the pile of crap. Okay, uh, we're back on the uh, pile of crap. Oh, sorry, <laughs> the the uh, GMC Safari, and we've got the interior out of it, and um, it's got a little rust uh, under the carpet pad because it was wet. Um, I've got some new carpet, new carpet, and I've got some new seats for it. Um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, here's two little cool features on this van, and one is rear air, and another rear heat, or side heat as it is. Uh, so we're going to have a look at that and see if that's working. Um, since I have the cowl off, um, I'm going to do a fuel injection service uh, to it and I'll uh, video that. Uh, this one thing, first thing you want to do before you do a tune-up. So, um, yeah. Uh, we've been making progress. Here's our headliner. Uh, this, uh, the two-piece headliner, um, the extra uh, dome light, um, and the uh, the newer visors and uh, I had to wire them but they work now uh, were thirty dollars and I can't you know that's a great deal I thought so I'll make it look a lot better anyways um, over here uh, we've got some tarot if you can see that or not right there in that bottle cap and we have some terracani some ants and they're digging on it incidentally if you ever have ants red ants or whatever get yourself some taro they sell it at Walmart T-E-R-O or T-E-R-R-O it's cheap and uh, we uh, put a little bit in a bottle cap and you put that uh, on the hole there and they'll all come out and eat it and they all will die. Uh, there was a time I was camping one time and uh, I set my tent in the dark right on a red red ants nest and I ended up with red ants in my tent and my sleeping bag. <sighs> the short of it is when I got all fixed up I came, ba came back to that campsite and I gave them a little dose of that along with all their buddies and uh, they are no longer um, rear air so we're gonna we're gonna see the operation of that see if that works uh, I don't think the compressor isn't turning so we have a leak somewhere because since the compressor isn't turning you have pressure switch and if the pressure switch does not sense pressure uh, then it shuts the compressor off so it doesn't burn it up um, so I'm pretty sure we have a leak. We'll have we'll have to test this out and look and see and all that other good jazz. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to do is a fuel injection service. Fuel injection service is um, first thing you want to do for a tune-up. Um, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. But uh, there's the van. Okay, and. Uh, I've got a couple carpet pieces out of the van there. I took and gave them the big spray. And then I've got another carpet that I cleaned already from the salvage yard. And uh, the carpet and the seats I got from the salvage yard, they were pricey, 100 bucks. So, what are you going to do? Uh, but they're much nicer than mine. Um, this is the non-powered seat, and the non-powered seat I'm going to put in the driver's side because they're ambidextrous, and uh, it's a better seat than the powered seat. Uh, it's a little bit better shape, I should say. But uh, they're, they're not too bad, uh, you know, uh, for what they are. They're a lot better than the seats I had. And then uh, Dan's been working on the VW today also and uh, buffing it and you I, I wish I could tell you how how beautiful this looks uh, you know 
So he's, he's got the whole thing cut and now he just has to buff it. And uh, he, he's got to do the fenders too, but I think he's going to take the fenders with him. All that range peel's gone. That's beautiful. It's great. Now I can buff it. And, uh, the body will be done so I can start electrics on it. Uh, some electronics. And then um, he's going to take the fenders with him and uh, buff them at his leisure. And that way he doesn't have to come over here. And that's great. That's that's excellent. So we're making progress on this as well. Okay, we're going to give that a little train to grinder switch and uh, kind of clean that up a little bit. Some of the spots, just go over real quick, give it a little quickie. And then I've got some, I don't know, I think probably have some white base coat. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever we'll pour on there is a little bit of protectant, and I'm not too concerned with it. It's not real rot. It's just some surface rust. There's no real big holes or anything. There's no holes, actually. Uh, it's just because that carpet got wet. Um, I think since this is the weekend, I'm going to go down to the carpet hoss and have a look in their dumpster, and I can probably find some remnant of uh, some padding. So I'll have some new padding. Uh, free, of course, and then um, we'll give this a little sweep out and then probably be too hot to do anything else. It's uh, already 90 and it's about 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and because of all the rain we had, yeah, the hum humidity has really hit. It's uh, Oklahoma's summer comes on like a sledgehammer. Uh, so I'm very jealous of those that live in Vermont, New Hampshire, up in Michigan and stuff like that because they still have beautiful weather up there. And uh, Oklahoma is getting stinky hot. Uh, uh, mowed the lawn yesterday three times one week. Yeah, so <laughs> crazy. Okay, all right. Let's get back to let's get back to this. Oh, look at that's beautiful. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? $100 worth of base coat. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's nice. Glad it's free. Oh, look at in a roller. Oh, yeah, that's the way. Huh? Oh, isn't that nice? Sweet. Yeah, <clears throat> so you know, uh, if you don't have any primer, uh, you know, the base coat you beg from your body shop will work just as well. Probably not, but I'm just saying that to make you at ease. <laughs> I figure any coating is better than no coating. So, yeah, there you go. Oh, I got it down in there, too. Uh, I didn't really want to do that, but yeah, it'll be all right. All right, let me wrap this up. and Yeah. Well, let's uh, see what Dan's doing. Like glass. Freaking beautiful. Beautimous. Yeah, it's always something, isn't it? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let me get this straight. Let me, let me, let me try to understand this. 
this gigantic door is being lifted and this teeny little tiny little tiny little spindle right there that just snapped right off. Wee 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 wee. That that's the way things were made in America now. All right, let's uh I got to go somewhere, but let's uh take that apart in a little bit. See if we can fix it. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, took the motor off. Um, this plate goes up underneath that like this. Uh, gear, gear. Who's got the gear? There's the gear. But this gear goes on top here like that. So that shaft, well, it's got set screw. It's got set screw. That shaft is going to have to come out of there so we can weld that. This is entirely fixable. So let's try to fix it. We have to take that shaft out. I believe the counting device is on the top. And so there's no alignment to this and there's no uh, timing on this component here. So I think what we can do is we can put that through there. Let's see, this will go up through. Mount the motor, this will go back up through after we weld the gear on. Yeah. Provided that this gear will go through that hole. Let's check that out and see. Um, I had to do a little grinder right here so the washers would go down, but I have them stacked as they would be on the device. And then I have plenty of room here to weld that on there. You can obviously see uh, the huge uh, uh, fault is because of how tiny it is. Now, I can't say, hey, you know, this is a piece of garbage. Uh, because when I bought this house in 2000, um, we put uh, that new up. And it's 2019. And with uh, uh, minimal uh, greasing and taking care of it, adjusting the chain and such, Probably I extended its life by 10 years greasing it, uh, but it still operates. <laughs> so let's see if we can uh, weld this and get another 10 years out of it. <laughs> okay, let's chuck her up in the vise and put a bead on it. And uh, I don't think I'm going to record that, but I'll show you the aftermath. I'll have to clean up where that clip goes a little bit more, maybe with a hacksaw. She fits in there, not exactly perfectly straight, but uh, you know we're not uh, uh, we're not uh, racing on uh, the salt flats. You know we're open to the garage door. Uh, I think that'll work probably. So let me clean up that slot with a uh, the hacksaw, and we'll put her back together. There is a, a little a little groove going on here on this side. And I think what we'll do is we'll flip this thing around since it, it's got four bolts in it. It should be able to go on the other side or three bolts or something. And that way we're pulling on the opposite side so it's uh, it's got a whole new uh, bite there. So, yeah. Lasts for another ten years. All right. Okay, I've got it laced up. Uh, seems to look all right. It's uh, 
it's just fitting in the guides and probably work for a little bit <laughs> we'll see uh, we'll see what happens and uh, yeah okay let's get her up there Oh, uh, incidentally, uh, taking, uh, if you've got one of these, wrap, uh, wrap some zip ties around it, and that way somebody can't, uh, uh, what they do is they put a wire up in there, like a coat hanger, and grab a hold of that and pull down on it, and you can whip your door right open and they can rob your house, but if you put some zip ties around that, they can't, uh, they can't pull it down. And in an emergency, you can give a give her a big yank, and she'll come down. Uh, got her mounted back up, wired up, and uh, we'll see what happens. Did I get the door unlocked? Yeah, it's unlocked. Okay. He push that button with the door locked. Wouldn't like that, would it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. All right. Disco. Yeah. Chain's a little loose. I think I might need to take the slack up on it a little bit. Let's see what happens here. Yeah. We'll take the slack up on that chain a little bit. And uh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you what, right now, I, I gave $200 for that little Lincoln welder used. Uh, beg, borrow, or steal, and get yourself a welder. Because I'm telling you what, they are so handy. Stuff like this that snaps, uh, and you, you can put it back together, and join the metal together, and make it work again, and not pay $200 for one of those. Priceless. Priceless. Just the... Just the thought of being able to put that together and not have to buy another one. It's just priceless. It's just priceless being able to fix your own stuff. Yeah, okay, all right, back to the van. I think I'm gonna rethink that uh, overhead door, garage door opener. It needs a bearing at the very top. It needs like a real bearing. And um, I was running on a race, or it's, it's a, it's a bushing. It's really sloppy. It needs a bearing at the top. So I, I think I'll re, re uh, I'll re-examine that. Take it back down and re-examine it. Put a bearing in it somehow. Maybe I'll film it. Um, again, real rewarding, fixing your own stuff. I went down to uh, Monwell's House of Carpeting, or wherever, and um, in their dumpster they have some, you know, scrap pad. And so I'm cutting out a new pad. Uh, to replace the yeah and then uh, put my carpet back down and the van won't smell nearly as bad um, let me think what was we doing oh yeah um, I want to get into the uh, tuning this up because it's got it's got mice have been chewing on the wires and probably the caps the original and spark plugs you know people don't like replacing spark plugs on these because they're hard to get to and that kind of stuff but before I do any um, uh, tune up on it especially spark plugs um, what I want to do is I want to wash the uh, fuel injectors or clean them you know um, and you know uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it off my apparatus and the apparatus is uh, I'll show you but the reason why I'm doing this first uh, because you're washing your fuel injectors with this super cleaner and it's going to go down the intake uh, you know the track and it's going to hit the back of the valves and it's going to wash all those big Hershey drops off the back of those her uh, back of those valves and uh, clean the combustion chamber and all that good stuff like that so that being said if you put new spark plugs in it you're going to follow up your spark plugs your new spark plugs so that's you want to do your fuel injection service first so let's uh, First thing you want to do is disconnect your fuel pump. So let's, you know, there's a couple of deals, but I'm going to get up underneath this van and I'm going to look because the uh, original fuel pump that I put in it 
or the fuel pump I put in it had a plug so I'm going to disconnect that plug and all I'll be defeating is my uh, fuel pump and my uh, fuel gauge so for a fact the fuel pump won't run if I disconnect that plug uh, a fuse or something else this has got kind of a weird system it's got a deal where the uh, where the fuel pump will run if you disconnect the uh, relay uh, it, because once you crank it and it gets fuel pressure it allows <laughs> the fuel pump to run yeah so uh, I don't know so let's something like that so let's let's disconnect it right at the gas tank or down from that plug it had a little plug kind of a thing let's see if we can find that and disconnect it and then for a fact the fuel pump will be disconnected okay this is indeed our fuel pump disconnect um, if you remember the big long cable it's going back to the fuel pump when we put the fuel pump on it had that big long cable and I uh, um, kind of cut it off and fudged it soldered it so I wouldn't have to get up underneath here it's not getting up underneath here to disconnect this it's that it's jammed up underneath the fuel tank back here and you just you, uh, it was pinched in there and you can't get it out maybe you can maybe you can't I wasn't one to uh, crawl around in the in the ticks out there to do that okay there's where it disconnects now incidentally um, some people ask well why do you disconnect your fuel pump well, don't don't get angry don't get angry okay it's just yes yeah, it's, it's a learning process okay uh, some people don't know well you want to disconnect your fuel pump so you're not running fuel to it so when you have your fuel lines disconnected up to the TBI throttle body injection or your multi-port injection or your sequential port fuel injection or your whatever port fuel injection you have uh, there's not gas spraying all over this works um, for your Honda as well as for your Mitsubishi as well as for your Toyota as well as for your Land Cruiser as well as for your whatever vehicle you have with a uh, fuel injection uh, you can do it uh, it'll take different uh, different pieces to fit it on there but the general rule I'm using is the same disconnect your fuel pump uh, find the fuse pull a wire uh, you know the, whatever to disconnect your fuel pump you can find all that information online so let's get up top you want to make sure indeed your fuel pump isn't running and the car won't start no fuel good okay uh, it's about 17 hours later uh, because my apparatus was full of cheese um, I don't remember uh, storing cheese in it but there you go uh, so yeah um, this attaches this attaches to the end of the line right here and evidently I used this as a, a fuel source you know like a, a remote tank or something like that and I had left gas in it and it, it really fouled things up in there <laughs> I had to clean it all out um, okay, it trapes on out to the to the salvage yard where your car is, and get yourself a uh, a line going to your fuel rail or your fuel injection uh, part. Mine happens to be throttle body, and a return line. Okay, and what I've done is the small one is a return line, and I've plugged it off with some hose. Okay, and the the uh, big one is the feed line. Uh, so. Um, that this is all this is like turns on this is blocked off this goes into the apparatus and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to hang this and we take the cap off in it and put uh, this in there which is your injector cleaner and then uh, and then we're going to dial up about 30 pounds on it because that's what the system runs on and uh, we're going to run uh, the engine off that canister of fuel um, so first thing what we're going to do is we're going to hook everything up take your cleaner off or your air box get everything out of the way hook everything up and are we going to put that can of injector cleaner in there <laughs> no 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 oh no 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 
understand that magic pixies are all around us okay and what's going to happen is if i put the if i put the cleaner in there if i put the cleaner in there it'll spray out all over the place maybe it'll spray out onto the engine and catch it on fire um uh, see so but if I put a little gasoline in there and try to run it on gasoline oh everything will be fine see see so you got to you got to go through these steps in, in order to thwart the magic pixies so let's get this uh, let's let's get this uh, underway let me take my air filter off uh, air cleaner off and, and get to the uh, uh, connections on the TBI yours may be different of course uh, remember this is a generic setup okay so uh, if you buy one of these apparatuses it comes with a bunch of fittings and gizmos and doodads and you can buy specific fittings and gizmos and doodads for your particular car um, you can buy block off kits and you can buy the kits to do it I'm just trying to show you how to do it cheaply by going to the salvage yard and uh, getting that and incidentally these come off of S10 because it has the same same engine you know uh, if you found a G van or something like that it, it with the six in it V6 v4.3 throttle body V6 yeah man they're all the same okay all right how do you know that you need a fuel injection service well is your vehicle uh, you know, did it uh, sit there for 10 years before it got drove? That ought to be enough. Um, you know, does it really run sluggish? Uh, did you ever have to muck out the gas tank because it had bad gas in it? Uh, all these are, are uh, all these are uh, reasons why you should do a fuel injection service. Um, if your vehicle has never had that kind of nonsense applied to it, I have a Nissan Altima with 250,000 miles on it, and uh, I've never done anything to the fuel injection our fuel injection system, nothing ever. So, yeah, there you go. Okay, we're gonna hook this up. We got gas in it. This is open. Uh, I'd like to get this where you can see. Let's see if I can change this a little bit. Let's see here. There you go. Yeah. Maybe you'll be able to see it. Maybe not. Okay, we'll put some we'll call it the regulator. Some air to her. And uh, we'll put. Uh, We'll dial, dial her up to 30 pounds and see what happens. Okay, so we have 30 pounds on the regulator. I'm looking for leaks is what I'm looking for. Uh, if you have a really high pressure system, you need to use some better hose, a different clamps, or something like that, because you could end up with trouble. Well, uh, let's see if she starts. And okay. okay, right now we're just running her off the bottle. And uh, we've got a 30 pounds. Uh, some systems work 40 pounds. Okay, what I'm going to bring you down and let you see is the fuel injectors. Okay, I'm going to watch you squirt or watch them squirt and. Okay, they're not all too bad. Uh, what's neat about throttle body injections is you can actually see the, th the TBI squirting uh, and uh, the injector squirt. And what we want is we want a uh, nice fine mist. We have a little leak here, but uh, 
it's it's negligible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little piece of paper towel and put underneath that. And uh, uh, what we'll do is we'll take the air off of it. And since we're reasonable, we'll use this injector cleaner. Now, let me tell you about injector cleaners. Uh, this is uh, this I bought from O'Reilly's. Uh, but there's another injector cleaner that you can buy. Running out of gas. There she goes. She run out of gas. Uh, you can buy another uh, brand of uh, injector. Back that off. Injector cleaner from O'Reilly's. It's called Ultra Clean. This is $17 a can. Ultra Clean's six something like that had uh, good luck with both of these uh, there are other stuff out there BG is pretty good but essentially you have to buy an uh, injection cleaner that the vehicle will run on some injector uh, injector cleaner is just uh, is just um, detergents and it won't run on it so this is uh, it's it's OTC it's for it's for that device so we're gonna pour that in there next Again, you want your apparatus as clean as possible, and mine was full of cheese, so it took a while to clean out. Uh, here's our here's our injector cleaner. on it. Oops, that's a little much. Back it off a little bit. Oh, I'll fire it up. It didn't like that stuff. Yeah, let's see what happens here. Runs completely different on that stuff than it does on gas. Let's have a look at our injectors. Oops. Still at 30 pounds. Okay, we'll let that run and uh, let that clean out the injectors out. I'll probably rev it a little bit and uh, and we'll clean it out. Get it completely finished. Go through that bottle. That's a bunch of soot and shit off of the uh, valves. Seems to be a bit finer. Spray. Okay, I put a little gas in there to flush out all the lines so I get all the uh, fuel injection cleaner I paid for. Got to make sure and flush out my 
fuel injecting or act the apparatus because you get plugged up. So I'll let that run and then I'll button things up. Be wary of the little O-rings if your vehicle has them. Uh, and make sure your original lines that are going back on have got O-rings on them as well. And make sure you don't double your O-rings. Okay, now let's go plug our fuel pump in. Now, this fuel pump, oh, let's figure out where this little gizmo went. I think it went right in here. It's got like a little lock. Yours may or may not have one. So, let me see if I can get this in there real quick like. Uh, well, it doesn't appear like it wants to go. That doesn't surprise me. Okay, let me shut this off and try to get that in there. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I can already tell quite a bit smoother. Now, we couple that with a good spark plug distributor cap rotor, uh, spark plug wire, chase all a vacuum leak kind of a thing, and uh, we'll have a pretty good running engine, I think, pretty dependable. Well, thanks for wrenching with me. That's how you do a fuel injection service. Uh, your car might differ a little bit, uh, but it, they're fundamentally all the same. There's a, uh, a line that goes to and a line that returns to the tank. So you just got to block off your return line, feed it with the line going in, shut off your fuel pump and run it on whatever. And uh, you, you too can clean your fuel injectors. All right. I'll see you guys later.